Welcome to the fourth lecture uh, of the sixth week. One we looked at discrete collection of particles which were coupled together and then we took the limit that the distance between the particles goes to 0. So, they come close together and form a continuum in which case it becomes like a string. So, we looked at the normal mode oscillations of a string. So, here the title says that it is about transverse waves in periodic structure. So, you can think of each of these red dots may be an atom and the distance between them is equal. So, one could think of the distance between these as A and each one is periodically placed in a sort of lattice. And we are going to look at what happens to transverse waves in this sort of a system. Here there are no strings, it is actually atoms or ions. So, instead of the tension, what we have here are the forces between these atoms, which are responsible for providing the restoring force. So, in other words, the stiffness constant actually arises from, uh, from the forces between these atoms or ions. So, you could say that a quantity like T by A, where now T does not represent tension, but the force between these uh, atoms that would represent something like a stiffness constant for this problem. So, which is why I have not drawn the lines between these uh, red dots that you see here. And this is going to be a finite crystal in the sense that uh, it is not infinite in extent. So, it is going to stop somewhere and here we cannot take the uh, wave equation because our system is explicitly discrete. It has these discrete set of atoms, we cannot take the continuum limit here. So, we shall work with the discrete version that we had uh, seen earlier. So, let me first begin by writing that equation again. So, m is mass of the atom and y is of course, the displacement. It depends both on time and position and the position is not a continuum, it is indexed by this quantity r. So, this tells you the position along the line. So, r would mean the rth atom for example. Let me assume that y displacement which is a function of position and t is a r into e power i omega t uh, minus k x, but here x is discrete. So, let me put that information as well. So, a r e power i into omega t minus k into r a. So, I have said that x which could be a continuous position is r into a. A is of course, the distance between two successive uh, atoms. So, now all we need to do is to <coughs> compute the second derivative and plug it into our equation of motion here. So, I have this y dot and uh, y double dot. If I plug in these in my equation of motion, I will get this and of course, there is an overall T by m a. So, this would now uh, simplify quite a bit. So, I will be able to get uh, after cancelling of terms, I uh, will get minus omega square is equal to T by m a. So, here I will get e power minus i k a plus e power i k a minus 2. And it is easy to see that as far as the quantity inside this bracket is concerned, this whole thing can be written as and if you have a structure like e power i k a by 2 minus e power minus i k a by 2, clearly you can write it as a sine function. 
provided of course, I multiply and divide it by some quantity like this. So, now we have uh, everything that we need minus omega square is equal to T by m a and this is the quantity inside this bracket along with 4 i square will be a sign function. So, I would get sin square of k a by 2 multiplied by 4 i square i square is minus 1 and would cancel with this i minus 1 on the left hand side. So, the final normal mode frequencies would turn out to be 4 t by m a into sin square k a by 2. So, these are the normal mode frequencies that we require for this problem. So, now if you recollect we already had obtained an equation for the normal mode frequencies for a similar case. For the case of particles which are connected by a spring and the particles are distant a apart. So, in that case let me rewrite the uh, normal mode frequencies for that case. So, that would correspond to omega square is equal to 2 t by m a into 1 minus cos j pi divided by n plus 1, where j is the uh, index of the normal mode and n is the number of particles. These two equations this and this would agree with one another provided we make the identification that k a by 2 is equal to j pi divided by 2 into n plus 1. So, we are just comparing the two sets of equation we obtained for normal mode frequencies. One for the problem that we are currently doing which is a collection of atoms in a crystal and the other one was set of particles connected by a, a string. So, now we have a condition that we can use to go further we also know that a times n plus 1. So, assuming that we have n atoms in the crystal a times n plus 1 is equal to L which is the total dimension or length of the crystal. We can directly equate this using this condition. So, remember that this is the condition that we had obtained in the previous uh, module for the allowed wavelengths of standing waves. Here the current problem that we are doing is equivalent to, uh, to a system of n atoms which are arranged in a linear lattice and in this case instead of two walls at two ends you have the system terminating and, and of course, there is nothing beyond that. So, you could expect that standing waves would be set up in this case. So, we can directly use the results that we got for the standing waves. So, here this result tells me that lambda n which is the wavelength of the nth mode is 2 L divided by n. So, I am going to use the use this result that uh, lambda n is equal to 2 L by n. So, this would imply that this quantity which is L can be related to the uh, wavelength of the normal modes as follows. So, L which is equal to A into n plus 1 would be equal to some p times lambda divided by 2. So, all it tells me is that the total length of the crystal that I have should be 
an integer times half wavelength. So, this p is integer. But then this is the result that we had already seen for the case of standing waves in the in the earlier uh, module. So, the result itself is nothing new, but we are simply using the same result that total length has to support precisely integer number of half wavelengths. From this condition alone, we can find out what is the largest and the smallest wavelength uh, that will be supported. For example, uh, let me rewrite this relation. So, I have A into n plus 1 is equal to p by 2 into lambda. Uh, let me uh, write an expression for lambda by A. So, lambda by A would be 2 into n plus 1 divided by p. So, p here of course, corresponds to the it is an integer it corresponds to the index of the normal mode. So, n equal to 1 would correspond to the fundamental mode and, and that would be the lowest in energy. And that also corresponds to the largest wavelength. So, here the wavelength would be large if p is minimum and the minimum p that you can have is 1, uh, which would mean that largest or longest wavelength that you can possibly set up in this crystal would correspond to lambda equal to 2 into n plus 1 into and n plus 1 into a is of course, the length of the crystal. So, that is 2 L. So, clearly this is the longest wavelength that you can set up. Similarly, we can argue and obtain what is the shortest possible wavelength that can be set up in this uh, case. So, that would happen if for the largest possible uh, p value and in this case the largest possible p value would be uh, simply uh, n plus 1. So, this is the shortest wavelength possible and this is the longest wavelength possible. Let us now focus on this case. It is easy to verify that um, sin k a by 2 is equal to 1 and this is because k a is equal to pi. Now, for this particular case of shortest wavelength where lambda is equal to 2 a, I would like to know what is the ratio of y r by y r plus 1. So, y r by y r plus 1 from the equation that we wrote down uh, previously e power i omega t would cancel. So, would e power minus k r a. So, the ratio of y r to y r plus 1 would be 1 by e power i k a and we know that k a for this case of um, shortest wavelength uh, k a is equal to pi we just saw that. So, if I plug in this value here I would get e power minus i pi which is equal to minus 1. So, it tells me the displacements of the neighboring atoms are opposite in sign for the largest mode. Again, if you remember, this is the kind of result that we had obtained for the case of uh, particles connected together by a string. Okay. It is exactly the same result that the largest mode, the neighboring particles are off by a phase of pi. Now, let us go back to our um, equation for the normal mode uh, frequency. So, let me write it again. Now, let us consider the limit when 
k a by 2 is small or when k is small really a is a constant. So, the only variable there is sort of k and let us take the limit k a by 2 tends to 0. In that case in this limit the normal mode frequencies would be 4 t by m a. So, sin theta can be replaced as theta in the limit of theta being very small. So, this would give me k a whole square by 4. So, omega square would be t by uh, m a into k square a square. So, the final result would be t by m into k square into a. So, this would be the frequency in the limit when k a by 2 is small enough. Now, that I have this expression for omega, omega square in the limit of k a by 2 being small, uh, I can now obtain the expression for uh, phase velocity. If we remember that um, c is equal to omega by k, where c is the phase velocity. So, if I go back to my expression here, I can write an expression for omega square by k square. So, c square would be omega square by k square and that would be equal to T a by m which would be equal to T by rho. So, the phase velocity in the limit when k a by 2 is small would be square root of T by rho. Now, let us go to the other case when k a by 2 is uh, not really small and in this case we will have to work with the full uh, equation. So, I will have my usual normal mode frequency which is 4 t by m a into sin square k a by 2. So, in general the phase velocity c is omega by k. So, in anticipation of what is to come uh, let me uh, divide this by k a by 2 and also multiply by k a by 2. So, now if you uh, simplify this expression I am going to get the following uh, result. So, here I will have root t by rho multiplied to sin k a by 2 uh, divided by k a by 2. So, I could write it as c keeping in mind that c is the phase velocity for small k. So, that would be c into sin k a by 2 divided by k a by 2. So, phase velocity in the general case where k is large depends on k which means k depends on lambda. So, phase velocity actually depends on uh, lambda. So, which means that different wavelengths are going to be propagated at different speeds. So, you will see a phenomenon called dispersion happening. So, let us summarize this uh, part. So, in this limit atomic spacing A does not figure in the in the phase velocity. So, in this limit it does not matter what your atomic spacing is phase velocity is independent of that quantity. On the other hand, so in the limit of large k the spacing between the atoms matters. The standing wave set up in such a crystal there wavelengths do determine the phase velocity of the waves that are supported. So, with this lesson let me uh, close this uh, module and in the next one we will do few more problems. Mm -hmm.